What's going on, Luca Nation? I think uh, today's episode, I think I'm going to have to carry on on my back, on my shoulders. These shoulders were made to carry the team as uh, one of my... LeBron, just like LeBron. Just like LeBron. Uh, The the issue or the the challenge, so I'll be up front, is uh, Cage is taking this show on the road. You know, he's he's got his groupies next to him, so the (laughs) Wi-Fi might be a little bit glitchy. Sound quality is going to be impeccable, I can promise you guys that. So, weekend edition... (laughs) It's been a huge week here. It's been a huge week here. I, I can tell I'm already cracking Cage up with all of my jokes so far. So this is hitting. I can tell this is going to be a great episode. Uh, it's been a big week for us, big man. And we got to thank our community. Because, Cage, these guys, uh, you know, many of our listeners, like if you look back, you know, nine, nine, ten months, they've been with us since day one. And, and much of our success, much of uh, our growth, you guys know we don't run ads or any type of marketing, is just word of mouth. Uh, and not only word of mouth, it's uh, the fact that you guys are so engaged and you you really are the ones that are feeding us topics to discuss and showing us a lot of the angles. So just before we even get started with anything, thank you guys so much. Thank you for our OG listeners. Thank you for supporting us, believing in us. And we're going to bring you an awesome episode here today. we got the Bucks playing uh, the Nets today. It's going to be an exciting game. Uh, we're going to bring you guys two plays uh, I'll turn it over to the big man. We apologize again. It's going to be the video is going to be a little glitchy. The audio is going to be just fine. Well, I hope it's not too glitchy, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean, and I'll go one step further than that. Thank you to all the OGs. Thank you to somebody who signed up this week. Thank you to anybody. You know, we got we're, we're adding new listeners, new audience all the time. But yeah, our you know our, our uh, we go by that one principle that Andrew keeps talking about providing value. So I, I'll go one step further, and hopefully you guys. You know, you know this, especially those of you who've been with us. If there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Send us a message. You know, anything You've is done as enough, small. Cage. No, I'm I'm being serious. Anything as small as hey, I'm thinking about buying this car. What do you think? I get those every day. I'm I'm thinking about doing this trade. What end of it do you want to be on? All the way through, you know, I'm I'm thinking about starting a podcast. You know, we got to come up with Cage, man. I'll bring you on there. Um, to you know, just questions about you know anything. I mean, the. Uh, you know, the hobby here, we, you know, we try to do plays. We try to talk about value as far as, like, making money. We try to, you know, we try to do stuff like that. But, you know, there's a lot of different ways to provide value in what we're doing. And, and, and you know, one of them is building up this community and making sure you guys are smiling. I mean, I, I, my, my ridiculous personal um, page, you know, I try to put movie stuff in there. I've been trying to do that more recently, you know, a little tie to nostalgia, make people smile. I have my Ferris Bueller one today, and my McLovin's 40th birthday. I mean, you know. We try to, you know, we try to make sure that, you know, you guys are having fun. You're enjoying yourself in this. Um, and if there's anything we can do, you know, anything we can address on the show, please let us know. A hundred percent. It was, it was interesting. I was talking to Cage offline and I was like, you know, when we started this podcast, like my dream was to help share financial wealth accumulation principles that I'm learning on my own. You know, that was the real desire. My family, we were middle class, but we, we had a lot of credit card debt, you know, we always leased our car. So I, I started this podcast with the intention of helping people learn financial responsibility as I was learning myself. Funny, this week it changed a little bit. I felt a little more like a, a reporter, a reporting journalist for the hobby. Uh, so I hope I did a good job for you guys. It means the world to us. Cage, any topics you want to discuss, uh, you know, before we get into our plays, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. I know we got a few things coming up, but uh, we're always putting out content. We got some video clips posted on Instagram. Uh, any topics you want to discuss? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm excited to see that game seven. We're going to talk about that hopefully a little bit. You know, the Mavericks and uh, and the Clippers. I'm excited that the Nets Bucks start because, um, you know, it's funny. I've said on our show, I think that's the real finals. That that's the real showdown between the you know the two of the best teams. But I've really been enjoying this Mavericks Clippers. Not because I think they're the best teams, but I do want to you know chat about that. We can talk about that now if you like. Um, and I do want. Are to you I'm are you not a believer in the Suns? Oh, I apologize, but are you not a believer no, in the Suns? Not really. I, I you know what? I, I said let them show me, right? That was a team, one of the several teams around this. And I said let let them beat somebody, let them beat somebody who's been there. And you know, I, I said the Suns would probably win. I said Portland would, would you know, um, you know, would give the 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 Nuggets a, a little bit of a run. These guys they're doing it, you know. The Jazz, the Suns, Denver, those were the top of the West. And I said I'm not gonna buy into them until they beat somebody. They all won their first round series, right? But this is this is where you uh, this is where you test your metal, right? This is where this is where the money's made. Chris Paul is great. Devin Booker is awesome, but Chris Paul is what moves that team. 
And, you know, Chris Paul's history is he gets a little banged up. He's a little injured and, you know, he's not playing in those big moments sometimes. And, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not a believer in the Suns per se, but I still will tell you anyone can come out of the West. And, you know, what, I, what, I, what I'll say about basketball more than anything else, right, is the best player is very important in basketball. Yes. It's one of the most important things, right? You, you, a great player can carry you. And, I mean, he may not talk. He may not have a personality. He may not be the most flamboyant person on earth. I've said this a bunch of times, right, about, about being relevant versus being cardboard relevant, if you listen to my, 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 my take on that. But is Kawhi not the best player in the West, if not the best player in the playoffs right now, skill-wise? I think – I mean, if you look at his efficiency too, he's like shooting like sixty-five uh, percent efficient, mm -hmm. efficient uh, field goal percentage. He doesn't defend like he used to. I think that's the one thing that you could kind of hold hold against him. But but no doubt, no doubt in my Listen, mind, he's the best Luka, player in the West. Luca didn't show up as much in this last game, and I think it's because you know Kawhi was playing a little bit more defense on him. He's not locked down every single time, but you know that's the other thing about him, right? It's one thing to show up on offense, but it's another thing to continue to play that offense when you also, at least part of the game, are playing good defense on the other team's best player. Like, that's the real divider. That's the real separator, I think. Um, and, yeah, he's not what he was. But, you know, who, who among us, besides you, who among us is, you know? Who I'm among not us? as good as I once was, right? My but I'm better. years have gone. But I'm better than I used to be. There was a time right? that's, back in my prime. So I was I watching. I really hold my own. Come I was on, watching country music. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I was watching Last Dance, and – uh Specifically, the episode where uh, Jordan retired, he went to play baseball, and it was the season where Car uh, Scotty carried the team on his back, got him into the first round. They won the first round series, but there was one moment in that series where uh, they were in the, the playoffs. They just made the playoffs, and they were tied up. I can't remember exactly who they were playing. I think it was 102-102. Uh, Tony Kukoc was on the team, Brian Armstrong, but Scotty Pippen was their main guy this year, right? And it was like a second left. And Phil Jackson called a play for Tony Kukoc. And it was when Scottie Pippen then refused to go into the game. Scottie Pippen said he, he felt that he deserved to get the last shot. He carried the team on his back. And he refused to go into the game. Tony Kukoc made the game winner. And they went back to the locker room. But it was a bit tainted. They said, like, the, the vibe was off. And the locker room was dead quiet. And Brian Armstrong, I believe that's his name, Gave this speech. Yeah, BJ. It might be Brian. I don't BJ. know. BJ. BJ. Know. BJ. I'm sure. Might be Brian. Gave, I don't know. gave this speech. Tears in his eyes. He's like, Scotty, let us down. You let us down, Scotty. I don't know how. I've... And that was Scotty Pippen not going in with one second left. LeBron left his team out the hang and went to the locker room with five minutes left. Anything? Anything? Listen, you are the LeBron hater here. So go ahead, let it out, let it out. Tell me what that means to you. I'm not a LeBron hater, brother. Tell me I'm what not it means a LeBron to you hater, from Cage. war, right? He's a general. That's General I'm, Washington. He's crossing the river with his soldiers, and he just says, "Hey, you know what? You guys go ahead. I'm gonna go back here and stay warm." <laughs> no, is that what happened? I mean, like, you're no. the <laughs> you're you, <laughs> no no one paints pictures like you. The way you opened up the Ezra episode talking about uh, you basically painted a picture from Sandlot. I think you were yeah, man. Initially, you you started with a metaphor, and you're like, now I'm actually just gonna tell you about my dream. I just want to be in the backyard smashing homers over the fence. That's it, and it's a uh, by the way, LeBron. I will bring you back to LeBron. But but because we talk about so many things and we're scatter shot, man. We we we're just throwing it all out there. One final little um, little punctuation mark. I'm gonna put on that collectible and that the, the Babe Ruth thing. I do want to say this, right? And because people have asked me, what do I really think? What you know? Did I get my answers? The whole deal. Forget about collectible for a second. Fractional shares. That's a legit thing, right? And and the, that Babe Ruth card or any card those guys bring, like it shouldn't taint the industry. And I think that's the kind of thing that I want to make sure we get out of that, right? I think that that is something that could really help bring our stuff forward. It makes headlines, right? It allows people access to invest in huge, huge card pieces that they would not otherwise be. You know, there's this circle of like 20 or 30 people who can who can afford these top things, right? But these fractional share companies, they're able to actually let you and me and and the common folks you know have access to at least a piece of 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 those historical museum type pieces so you know uh, 
the one thing that I, I think come out of this and the research we've done and the conversation we've had is I've become a little bit more of a believer in the fractional share, you know, the industry, you know, the practice and that kind of stuff. So I do want to put that kind of like, um, you know, punctuation mark on the whole story. It is a cool thing. And, you know, I, I you know, for, for whatever it's worth, I don't want, you know, you know, that to be tarnished. Right. I, I do want to make sure that like, you know, these guys, I, I, you know, the companies that are out there rally um, Otis, which I'm starting to do a little research on. I'm sure, you know, these guys, they know what they're doing and, you know, they're regulated and, and there's not a lot of that in the market. Um, so I, I, anyway, I just wanted to make sure before we continue along with your hatred of LeBron, um, and you know, we'll, we'll let you hate on LeBron as much as you like. It's fine. You're going to get some hate, hate DMS and it's fine. You take it. You got your shoulders are made for this. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure folks knew, you know, cause they've asked, Hey, what do you think about fractional shares? And, and, you know, um, you know, this week of fun talking about it. I mean, I, I think it's a great thing. So go ahead, LeBron, his shoulders are made for something, not, not winning. Mm-hmm. Talk about scatterbrain. This is a scatterbrain episode, huh? I'm not <laughs> I'm a LeBron hater. J- just like when we broke the the news of the collectible, I'm not a hater. I just like to look at things from all angles. I think of myself so, more as a scientist than anything else. Let me say this, right? I- I'm going to start to look at LeBron as a body of work, right? Not just what happened this past week. I'm going to look at the body of work, right? So LeBron is 36 years old. You know, when Jordan was 36 years old, he retired. Now, when Jordan okay. was 35 and change, he won a championship. He won in 1998. <laughs> and when LeBron was 35 and change, he won a championship. He won last year. So there's a lot of correlations. The difference is LeBron played basketball this year at a pretty high level, right, in the year where Michael Jordan retired. Now, Jordan came back and he played, he played with the Wizards, right? So who knows what happens with LeBron going forward? But there is that parallel. We talk about the GOAT and those championships. And, you know, obviously he retired after winning two three-peats, basically. That's a little different than LeBron. LeBron's three years in uh, – you know, in, in, in L.A. can be characterized as, you know, two pretty terrible seasons. I mean, this was a good season, I guess. I mean, you know, you got to gotta think of it as a failure, injury, you name it. That middle season, they won a championship. It was a Mickey Mouse championship. Get it? Get it? A Mickey Mouse championship. It was a Mickey Mouse championship, but it was a championship nonetheless. He still got a ring for it, right? It still counts. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listen, if you want my take on LeBron, um, I said – in an episode, we can go find it, right? But I said in an episode while they were playing, while they were doing fine and, and you name it, and he went out for his injury. He got injured. I said there was no way he was going to be in the finals this mm-hmm. year because he would rather not make the finals than make the finals and lose. And that his team this year was not going to be a team that if he took it to the finals, that they would win. I actually, at the time, I think said that he probably wouldn't make the playoffs. Like LeBron would rather, instead of having that narrative of, he gets the finals and loses. And what would that make him? Four and seven or something like that in finals? I mean, I, I don't know what it is now, right? He's got how many rings does he have? He has four rings. He has four. And how many? I think he had six six losses in the finals, I think. I think it's four mm-hmm. and six. So, I mean, go, so I said that, right? I mean, made the playoffs. Uh, uh, but I don't think it's completely fair. I've also said many times that Anthony Davis was the engine that made that team go. Well, so, so if you if you just my second point, yeah. Cage, Cage yeah, is like a, he's like one of those sprinklers, he's a water hose. So <laughs> like, like this. My like second hose. point Motorboat. after bringing Motorboat. so the first thing was the last dance leaving with five minutes left, uh, and the the same thing how the the championship team Bulls responded when Scottie Pippen wouldn't go in with one second left. So second thing. How embarrassing their losses were without Anthony Davis. And then the fact that they won the championship last year with Anthony Davis. If we're just doing simple math, does that make every single championship, but specifically last championship, really Anthony Davis's and LeBron was the supporting cast? Should we at least ask that question? And then if we go down and look at it, we say every single time he's won a championship, he's had a guy that's as good, if not better than him on the team. Uh, people are going to hate on me for that. And you're going to say it's not fair. Is Kyrie better than him? No, I don't think so. But I think hey, – I don't know if I think just, better. Right. Close. Just chill before you – you like – you are the Instagram mob. I'm, I'm curious about the question. Is that question at least going to be brought up? Because without Anthony Davis, they got blown out by 30, and then they got blown out by I think like 15 or 20. With Anthony Davis, they won a championship. Everything else is the same, same exact team. So it makes you wonder, does it not? Or am I the only yeah. one wondering? No, maybe I'm the only one wondering. To have, I think it's important to have an AB. I think it's important to have the one-two. 
I think it's probably slightly overstating to say that LeBron was not the best player on his team, that he's always the second best player on his team. I, I know you want to go through it, right? You can, you can, Dwayne Wade is close. I don't know if Dwayne Wade was better than LeBron. Kyrie, close. I don't know if Kyrie's better than LeBron. Anthony Davis, I don't know if he's better than LeBron. Like, I would probably argue LeBron's better than all three of those guys and all the teams he won championships on. He was the best player. Now, if the point you're trying to make, and guys, we want you commenting on this. I want to hear it. I want to hear what your thoughts are on this. Maybe we'll clip a video up and we'll post well, it. Well, yeah, and kids, real quick, if I could contextualize yep. it, this morning in our group, somebody showed a quad 95 BGS uh, Tops Chrome Gold Refractor that sold someone's first buy. It was like a million two two hundred thousand dollar card. So people are still buying into LeBron after this loss, which I think this loss is pretty embarrassing. Maybe other people don't. Uh, but people are it's still the guy who bought buying. It one of Gary's partners in his new uh, NFT venture. Oh, I think. Interesting. Had no clue. I guess I'm curious. I'm curious. and It's unfair to be. I think in today's day and age, if we to bring up a topic or someone disagrees, we're instantly labeled a hater. I'm not a hater. These are all questions. I'm curious people that also watch basketball, not just look at stats, if they're seeing the same things as I am. Because to me, LeBron was rolled over in this postseason. Rolled over. He had no fight. It, well, he, he bailed on his team. I, I thought he lacked leadership. I thought with Anthony Davis went out. Uh, he completely gave up, and I'm curious if other people feel that. Maybe they don't, Cage. No, but I'm not so, trying to be so, polarizing for polarizing sense. No way. I got a bunch of plays. No way LeBron will be one of them then. So I'll make LeBron one of my plays today because it's perfect on this, and I want to hear what people say also. I think it's overstating to say that he's he's not the best player on his team, but it may be part of it that you need that Robin. I mean, Michael Jordan always had Scottie Pippen. He said it right there in the last dance, right, that he never won a championship without Scottie. And, and, you know, that's important. Right. I mean, there's only so much one person can do in a team sport. And I'm not a LeBron apologist, but I am going to say this. There are going to be people out there who saw this performance this season and his overall body of work in L.A., which is two bad years and one, like I said, Mickey Mouse championship. And I think in this offseason, you might be able to find LeBron cards at a bargain. I do. It's almost like before Brady went to Tampa Bay, people were like, oh, he's done. He's done. Blah, blah, blah. Now, look, you know, Brady's got again. You know, and, and there was an opportunity there for a minute to buy one of the best players to ever play at a slight discount. That that time is gone. Right? I'm not saying LeBron is going to win a championship next year. Who knows? But he's going to line up as, as, as one of the best players in the league next year again. If he comes out, you know, he keeps himself in great shape, keeps himself healthy. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those safe, safe plays where I think – if people overreact to this and you see deep discounts, if it doesn't happen, don't go in, right? Like, this is just a play where if I mean, the, LeBron the tops, gets beat up. Caves, the Topps Chrome is about 15000 right now. It was. Right. Well, I would I would wait for it to come down even a little. I know it was 40000 but I would wait for it to come down even a little less. It's already it's starting into, like, what I would consider you know, not bargain territory. But, yeah, I mean. That's exactly what I'm talking about. People are like, I got to get out of LeBron now. And there's that race to the bottom where people are trying to cash out of LeBron. There's an opportunity, I think, to to buy somebody. And, you know, they'll be hyped next season. And they'll be fine. And they'll be, you know, they'll be playing again next season. Same, by the way, so I'll just get my plays out of the way there. The same, the same can be said for someone like Dame Lillard, who I think you could buy at a discount now because, you know, he, he, the guy's great. But obviously his team didn't do too much, right? This is a time here. So forget about just the guys themselves. I give you LeBron and Dame. But to look for people who have that exit, you know, Ja's tough because Ja had one heck of a run-up. But maybe Jaron Jackson Jr., you know, these guys who are now out of the playoffs, who people might have been holding on to on that off chance that this guy's going to win a championship, and they didn't, and they're out. You know, R.J. Barrett didn't exactly, you know, didn't exactly light it up in the playoffs, but he's a young player. Those guys who were in the playoffs who get bounced if, early. If you're buying LeBron, though, how do you not look at Curry? Yeah, Curry, too. 100% Curry, too. Although Curry... The narrative on Curry is a little different, right? Because Curry's team was not there this year. So there's not this like, oh, wow, he's in the playoffs, and boom, he got bounced out. Like, people are people are giving the Lakers There's no overreaction? LeBron crap. The people are like, oh, LeBron was terrible. We thought he was going to win a championship again. Like, we thought he was going to beat the Suns. You know, we thought blah, 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 blah. With, 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 with Steph, I think people were surprised that they even had a chance at, like, the play-in. You know? I mean, his whole team was basically gone. It was him doing, you know, he actually helped his his – his street cred, you know, and his name this season because he basically just did it all himself. 
um, and was in the MVP race, I would say, you know, if not coming in second, third, maybe, you know, I mean, you know, so, so that's a tough one. But yeah, I mean, you, my deal is any distance. Who do you have in game seven? Race. Who do you have in game what? seven? Uh, Clippers, oh. Clippers, Mavs, you got in game seven. So uh, I think that the, the, the betters have installed the Clippers as, as an overwhelming favorite. I think Dallas was like plus 200 when it opened up. Right. So like two to one, you know, and, and it's weird too, because in this series, no home team has won. So you would think, well, that's going to stick. Right. I mean, been on Dallas, but um, you know, heavy favorite now um, the Clippers are. So that's interesting. I got to tell you, I mean, I'd love to see Dallas move on. I really would just cause it's, you know, uh, I like Luke. I like watching his game. I like watching him play. I like him more than anybody else who, who's on the court there. Um, you know, from a fun fan hobby perspective i'd love to see luca advance um but i don't know man the, uh, the clippers i think in this last game they found something right and it's it's scramble to luca right scramble to luca make him pass and make the other players on his team beat you right and that's what they did and in this past game they didn't you know tim hardaway shows up he seems to have showed up you know porzingis made a couple plays but when it comes down to it like they did not win the game and, and the Clippers, if they're going to say, you know what, we're not going to let Luka beat us, we'll let the rest of the team beat us, I'll take the Clippers over the rest of the Mavericks team. Is this uh... – and, guys, we apologize. I mean, the video is not terrible, but it's not up to the standards that we would like to have. But you guys have to remember, we're a seven-day-a-week podcast, and now we bring you Cardboard Relevant, which I think is the best piece of content out there. K just goes face the camera and just drops million-dollar bombs. So we'll start producing that a little bit better. But we do the seven days a week. We try to bring you as much content as we can. Sometimes the quality is not going to be great, like Cage today is at a family outing. I mean, at the end of the day, family comes first. So, you know, what can we do? And we hope that you guys uh, have a little bit of grace and empathy towards that. Um, is this like a make it or break it for Paul George in the sense of like, let's say Paul George comes out and goes two for 10 in the first half. Uh, are we going to start hearing some of those, uh, pandemic P things again? Yeah. If they lose and Paul George doesn't show up and puts up a stinker, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I don't think it's a make it for Paul George at all because Paul George is not going to get unless he goes out there and wins the game for them, unless he drops in game seven here, 40 points and hits the game winner for them tonight, it's never going to be Paul George's team. So he's never going to get the benefit of it. He's in a real tough spot. When they win, it's Kawhi's team and Kawhi gets the glory. When they lose, it's where the hell was Paul George? So he's in a little bit of a tough, a tough spot. So it sounds like that team lacks, yeah. lacks a bit of leadership, doesn't 100%. it? And that's the problem with Kawhi. That's a problem with Kawhi, 100%. I really like my play cage. So what do you know about 1998 back to back tops Chrome release? Anything? 1998 back to back tops Chrome. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear about them. So I'm just like, I was watching last dance. I feel like Jordan cards across the boards ha ha have been just kind of beat down. And I was just like, just playing around, you know, laying in bed, you know, so is I it think the, all do this. Ones, the one that has East West on it. No, it's a really nice looking card cage. It's it's a Topps Chrome card. It's Jordan shooting his iconic fadeaway. The design on the bottom's pretty cool too. It's like kind of back to back but mirrored. And I'm looking, and the there's only 500. Here we go, 473 graded, 206 PSA tens, and 240 PSA nines. And a PSA nine for Topps Chrome Jordan in his final year, his his uh, championship winning season, it was a hundred bucks, 125 bucks or best offer. So, get out of here, horsefly. Um, as we start looking for plays, I, I thought that was a good good entry-level play into Jordan. You got Topps Chrome. You got his final season, championship season, uh, champion, final season with the Bulls, championship year, and you're able to get a PSA 9 of a Topps Chrome for 100 bucks or even cheaper. And it's a cool-looking card. I think it's a PC type of card. Uh, I, would, I haven't brought one of these plays in a while, so I wanted uh, to bring it up. It's a nice card. I, I, I can pull it up on the screen. A Chrome Jordan in PSA nine for a hundred hundred bucks, something like that. That's how do you beat that? I'll share I my know screen. I know one where it's like it's like an all star one, it's like East West, where it's I think I think it's Jordan with like that's maybe Kobe on the back. Oh, that's a cool card. Can you see it, Kate? It's, it's a pretty cool back card, right? Two back. That's a really cool card. I don't yeah, think I've ever I've ever seen that. No, and the back is really cool too. It's all black Jordan back. To, it's just a cool looking card. 
Is it number? Uh, does it have that, an insert can... number? It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, the card is B1, guys. B1. Back to back. 1998 Tops Chrome B1. I, I like it. I think uh, people that, are, you know, we always say buy what you love. Well, you also want to buy a card that has potential to, to gain. I think this is a buy what you love with potential upside. That's cool, man. I like it. I like it. So let's see. Predictions. Give me Nets Bucks. Give me, give me two minutes. That's your series, man. You know these guys. Talk to me. I, I mean, I don't want to look like a fool, but I'm going to go out on the limb and say, I think, I think the Nets are going to come out shooting cold. I think the Bucks are going to win game one. I think actually the Bucks are going to go 2-0 back to Milwaukee. Uh, I think they're hungry. I think they're going to be more motivated. I think they're going to t- be tough on defense. Uh, I just think they're a little bit pissed. And I think you can't necessarily will your way to the Eastern Conference Finals. But I think in game one, and maybe to carry that over to game two, I think they're going to have more energy. They're going to have more tenacity. And they're going to attack this team on defense. I know as funny as that sounds. Uh, they're going to be up in their chest. And I think... Uh, P.J. Tucker, fresh legs. Uh, I think P.J. Tucker, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis on the perimeter. They could switch. So I know the Nets have amazing offense players. Well, you have four really good defenders. Four really kind of, you could look at them as all pro defenders uh, at one point in their career. So they could switch across the perimeter. Uh, I have the Bucks coming out with 1-0, and I actually think that they could go up 2-0 in Brooklyn. At the same time, at the same time, I, I, I could bite my tongue at, at like 8, 8 30 p.m. when the game's over, 9 p.m. when the game's over, and just be like, the Nets blew them out by 40. I mean, they they have the horses. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just what do they do, right? I mean, this is gonna be a tough challenge for them. Giannis is gonna be a beast. I mean, I think you could pretty much expect that. Um, yeah, I like it. You know, I say the Nets take this series. Um, I think they they figure out a way to let Giannis do his thing, just like Tatum did his thing, and and they just have too much offense for pretty much any team now to uh you know to overcome although i will say this the team that gets out of this series i think it will be a difficult series for both teams it's gonna be a hard fought series a lot of good matchups i think that especially if Embiid's hobbled i think that atlanta has a real good shot in this next round and yeah, they match up sure. really nice like i think if the nets if the nets wind up you know getting out and they match up get the hawks they, they played them pretty close I mean, the Nets, I don't think they ever played them with all three guys. Um, but the Nets played them pretty close. Like, it was 2-1. I think like, one of the games went to overtime and stuff. So, you know, and you'd figure that this Bucks nets series is going to take something out of the team that, that advances. So it's interesting, man. It, you know, like, it, it's definitely exciting. I love playoff basketball. And, um, yeah, so that's it's a cool little thing to cover. Any last words for our, for our crew? Anything well, for Luka Nation? Something to look at. And this is probably why one of the reasons why I don't believe in the Sixers is you brought up the Hawks, right? Why there's you're like the Hawks can make a run. Well, why? Do you, like I wonder if people ask the question. And I think you have to beat teams on three levels. Well, I think you have to beat teams offensively on three levels. I, I always talk. Uh, Doris Burke talks about her about this. I love Doris Burke. You have to have perimeter scores. Trey Young, Herter, Gallinari, Bogdanovich. Like these are these are all really good three point shooters. So you could you spread the court. You know, I don't know if you noticed uh, Trey Young versus the Knicks. He was pulling up mid range a lot. He had his mid range floater dangerous. Now you can floater score in the mid range. The floater kills him because now the, the, the center has to come out and guard him. And when that happens, you have the lob to Capella. If you can really dominate on three levels, it's really tough to stop offensively. It's really, I'm not going to talk a little a lot about all, uh, defense, but if you could score on three levels, that's really, really, really tough to stop, especially the playoffs. The Sixers don't have that, even with Embiid. We're not the best three-point shooting team. We're not the best mid-range team. We have some three-point shooters, but they're streaky. And then we just dominate in the paint because Embiid's there. Uh, by the way, I love how Tyrese Maxey's come on, though. He's he's come on. I, I would really look out for Tyrese Maxey next year. I think he's one of the best offensive players in this draft uh, from previous year. So I, I would look out for that. Um, uh, uh, last thing, last thing. I, w- I want to wrap with this. Guys, uh, Top Shot. Top shot market is uh, is perked up a little bit, maybe 20%, 30% in the last few days. So uh, I don't know what you want to do with that information. I sold off a few of the smaller items I was holding. Uh, I always love to sell into strength, and it's a lot easier to sell into strength when the market does perk back up even a little bit. But just for our still, our, you know, the one top shot listener that we have left, 
uh, the Top Shot market perked up a little bit the last few days. It did. They did a good thing with that Cool Cats. Hopefully, you guys. I mean, Andrew always likes to say this. He says, uh, we, "We're giving away my cardboard relevant." But I did a cardboard relevant about this Cool Cat challenge, saying, "Get in now!" And it was like sixteen hundred bucks when I said to do it to buy all the Cool Cats uh, without the Lamello. Lamello was a gift, and now that Cool Cats that goes to three thousand dollars. The value on the floor wow. value. It's like high twos. Um, Luca's back around a thousand bucks, and um, that's. You know, he, and, and then, then he got the add Lamelo and Lamello. So no, with the Lamelo, because um, okay. a lot of them have gone down, which is what happens. But they also layered on because it was this master challenge, like I like I mentioned, they layered on utility. Like they gave access to the queue, anybody who holds the thirty, to all of the rest of the series two stuff. So the legendary drops, the MG, you don't you don't have to qualify, you don't have to meet their collector score anymore. You automatically gave like a master key out. So it's a really cool thing because they're adding utility to these moments. It's exactly what we talked about with Dapper doing this stuff. But let me also throw some ice water on it, right? So I still have some really big <laughs> moments. And, of course, I, 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 I posted. I'm like, oh, just like you said, you know, maybe selling some strength. Like I, I have these big moments. And I'm, not, I'm probably not going to sell them, right? But I posted on Twitter, oh, you know, I'm thinking about selling these things, right? Why the hell not? You know, the market goes up. You try to sell them to strength, right? I got these three left. And everybody, I got a lot of messages. But everybody is, it's the same as what we talk about with card shows. I'm like, all right, I'll take 20% off the floor of these things. Like, you can't get it for this price, right? Now, I'll sell it to you for less than what it's at. And everyone's like, nah, that's too high. Last week it was this. The last couple sales were this. And I, I, I don't want to fight with people because, like, okay, you don't want a price. But what I want to say to everyone is, okay, but you can't get it for last week's price anymore. Just like, you know, just like the comps for Michael Jordan cards. Like, you're not getting seven hundred thousand dollars for a rookie anymore. You're not getting forty thousand dollars for for your Kobe's and your Lebrons anymore. Like you know, so it's the same thing. Even though there's a little bit of strength, you know, when people are like, oh, I'll buy it. What, what, what do you what do you want for it? And I'm like, I'll sell it to you for cheaper than you can get it for. No, 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 no. I want it for last week's price. Okay, well, I'm not. <laughs> if I was gonna sell it for last week's price, I would have sold it last week. So anyway, there's a little. I gotta throw a little ice water on, but that's just it's typical. It's just you know, it's what happens in in our game. But yeah, man, uh, good mention on the top yeah. shot. I think you guys out there listening would be foolish not to keep a pulse on the different platforms that are out there. I think I'll repeat myself. I think you would be foolish not to have a pulse on the different platforms out there. That doesn't mean deposit thousands of dollars. That doesn't mean deposit any money. But if you guys understand human behavior and human needs, we, Top Shot solved the need of instant ownership. Starstock solves the need of instant ownership. Whether these two platforms become the next thing or not, they will be prequels to what we really want in trading. And that's instant ownership transfer. That doesn't mean cards are going to go away, but I think there is going to be always a demand for that day trading of we exchange money for goods, money for goods. And I want it right away. Uh, keep a pulse. I think there's going to be more and more businesses evolving and starting up over these next six to I love months. I love exactly that. Tonight's, you know, tomorrow's game seven, right? There might be some people who want to bet on Kawhi. There might be some people who want to bet on Luca. On Star Stock or on Top Shot, you make your bet and your bet is cast. On eBay, you make your bet, right. and if you're unscrupulous, you can get your bet back. That's the difference. You know, you bet. It on works Luka, both Luka ways, loses. Cage. So yeah, it, it works both ways. I could I could buy a Giannis card on eBay, and if he has a monster performance tonight, the seller could cancel it too. Very true. So it's, Very it, true. it cuts both ways, and it, that needs to be solved. Yep. Well, listen, that that's the best point I, I think of the show. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks, Luca Nation. And again, smile. Have fun with this stuff, right? We're, we're bringing some positivity. And if you're if you're if you're sitting there saying, "Oh man, this hobby's beating me up," you name it, send us a message. <laughs> we'll make you smile. We'll keep you in the hobby. We'll tell you about five things that we're grateful for about this hobby. And uh, it's a fun little exercise Andrew does with me every now and again. So uh, we're here for you guys. If you need anything, please just just send us a message. Take care, everybody.